All right, guys, so welcome back. Um, in this video, we're gonna go over group policy implementation of the CIS benchmarks. In the previous video, we set up the OU structure for Active Directory. Um, we have also uh, gone over importing ADMX and ADML templates into our policy definitions and what you have to do if those policy definitions don't exist. Um, and then we're going to uh, now go into how do we implement the policies themselves. Um, so to do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually make sure we have the folder open where our, all our policies are currently sitting. And we're gonna grab this policy. This, we're gonna start at the top and we'll work our way through. Now, mind you, I'm only gonna do one of these. And I end the video, you're gonna have to go through every single one of these with the exception of the Intune Stig baselines. Intune Stig baselines are gonna be specific for Azure. You don't have to do those. But the from the DOD server 2022 and prior, to the ADMX files, the, the, the space in between. So between here and here, you're gonna have to import these. And there's probably gonna be at least two, sometimes three or four configurations in each of those that's gonna require an individual policy to import the settings. But we're gonna just, for the sake of this, just do the one so I can show you how to do it and then you'll work your way through the rest of them. And when we get them all imported, we'll start the next video and we'll go through how to apply these policies to individual systems what to look out for, what additional things are set in here, and what commonly it will break. Because these will break a variety of configurations in most domain sets where they're not designed or implemented from the get-go on setting up STIG-based policies. Now these are the best way to uh, complete your, C, you know, your CIS benchmark policies are the best way to complete your uh, NIST build. So if you're going for NIST 800-171 or 800-53 and you need a baseline configuration to build off of, this is what you wanna do. You wanna probably watch the previous video and the video before so you have a better understanding of what your OU structure should look like and how things should be laid out. But this video specifically will get your baselines installed and the next video will show you how to apply these to your OU structure and then after that, we'll, we'll tackle the WMI filter portion and how to individually apply these to systems where maybe you need more here and less there. Documentation and POAMs are, key, are the, the key factor in your NIST configuration. So having this alone still won't make you compliant. Um, putting these in here will not necessarily make you compliant anyway, but they are the step towards getting compliance without spending months going through the full configuration and individually implementing each one of these changes into a server. Um, these things will also, for the most part, completing these will get you pretty close to a Nessus scan completion um, or a STIG completion to pass um, security compliance requirements for the Department of Defense, CMMC3, CMMC2, uh, and also probably get you pretty close to, um, in the general ballpark of a uh, C3PAO security compliance test on certain machines. Again, different applications will have different things. So this is just for Windows. Um, so let's move on. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna actually grab the uh, file name. And to do that, just single click, where it highlights, right click, choose copy. Then we're gonna go to start. We're gonna go on and select Windows Administrative Tools. Um, and in Windows Administrative Tools, look for Group Policy Management. If it's not pinned already, I suggest you pin it. Um, so we'll get into Group Policy Management. In here, we're gonna have the layout where you're gonna have the forest, the domains. You'll have the domain we just created. If you didn't watch the first couple of videos, this is the domain we created. Um, this is our OU structure. This looks exactly the same as it would in your Active Directory Users and Computers folder. Um, we're gonna look specifically for the Group Policy Objects and select that. You'll have your default policies in there for the time being. We're gonna right click and choose new and right click and choose paste. We're gonna get rid of this continuous and the, the junk at the end. Um, and for the sake of this, I'm actually gonna change the front of this to computer um, hyphen uh, Adobe Acrobat Pro. Now, in some cases, you may not want to do that. Maybe you'll want to do, since you're only going to install Adobe Acrobat Pro uh, DC on specific machines, um, say, for instance, you know that Adobe Acrobat Pro is only going to be on machines that are uh, your accountants, um, and this particular policy is only going to be a computer policy. I would actually put accounting hyphen the Adobe Acrobat Pro policy, and then put computer 
and then I'd hit OK. And then I'd grab over here and I'd grab this and I'd actually highlight this, copy it. Right click, new, paste this in here and change computer to user and hit OK. So now we got two policies we created. These are blank, there's nothing in them. They don't do anything if you apply them just the way they are. They, all they'll do is they'll slow down your logon. They don't actually do anything at this point. There is no configuration imported. They're just named. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually import the configurations for the computer policy. To do that, you right click on this, you choose import settings, click next. You don't need to back it up. There's nothing in it. Click next and we're gonna browse. And we're gonna go into the folder structure where we put ours, which is tools, build, the group policy objects. We're in the DOD Adobe Acrobat Pro, uh, DC continuous, and we're gonna to go to GPOs. We're gonna hit OK, and then click Next. And in here, we're gonna have two. We're gonna have one for the computer and one for the user. Since this is the computer policy we're clicking on, right here, we're gonna import the computer settings. And we're gonna choose Next, Next, and Finish, and then OK. Now, this will generate the report and we'll see that we do have a computer configuration in here. And this is the DOD standard for what we should have for security with Adobe Acrobat DC. You could change this and make it more secure, but if you make it less secure and you go through a compliance test, chances are you'll fail. So don't make it less secure. And chances are there may be changes that take place along the line that will not be in here or will be environmental uh, specific. So keep in mind that if something doesn't work right after you apply a policy, you may have to roll back. And we'll get to how you roll back on the client. But for the sake of this, we're just going to go through the build. Um, we'll also notice that down here, the user configuration is now set to disabled. This is good practice. If you only have computer configuration, disable the user, user configuration. If you only have co user configuration, disable the computer configuration. Try not to put both user and computer in the same uh, policy object. Um, the reason why is because you could cause issues where latency will occur on logon. Um, it's not worth the latency. It's easy enough just to split these out. Uh, it gives you more flexibility too in the future. So that's now applied. And by applied, I mean we applied the policy to the actual uh, group policy object we created. This object has not been applied to any of the OU structure. It still does nothing. You could check that by going in here and um, checking on the, uh, man, I can't win today, scope. And in the scope, it'll show you the links. The links will show you specifically what OU the policy is applied to. If you don't see anything in there, it's not applied to anything. It just exists. We're going to do the same thing here on the user. So we're going to right click. We're going to go import settings. Go next, next. Since we already did the last one, it's still set there as the default. So just do next. Make sure you choose the right one, which is user. Next, next, finish. Click OK. So now if we go back into settings here, we'll see that the computer configuration is disabled. But the user configuration is now enabled. So that completes how to do your import of your policies. You create a new one, you change the name to something that's going to be usable for you, and then you import the policy. So I'm going to end this video here. I'm going to have you go through the rest of those uh, configurations that exist in this folder and work your through, way through every single one of them um, and import them. And then once you're done importing them, uh, go to the next video and we will start to work through specifically how we apply these to specific OUs, how the structure works, how to use enforcement, what's necessary, what's not necessary, how to make changes that'll make your life easier but still meet the compliance standards, um, which, what things could be changed as uh, accepted risks um, that will help uh, with uh, maintaining the infrastructure still as an IT administrator without having to jump through hoops because there are things in here that will make your life hell as an IT person if you don't change them. Um, if they are non-compliance and you're just doing this as a, uh, as a build, then by all means just use the stuff out of the box um, and then tweak what you like. Um, if you are going for compliance, uh, this is the standard. Um, you should probably put it in a staging OU and slowly introduce your desktops to it one by one to make sure that it doesn't break anything or when it does break anything that you have a way to work around it. Um, at any rate, like and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. If you run into any issues, feel free to 
you know, ask the, the put the post the issue in there, and maybe myself or one of the other IT people I'm sure that are watching this can help you out. Um, if you uh, have a situation where you can't find the file, just remember it's import settings and not uh, restore from backup. Restore from backup does not work to import the settings. Um, again, hopefully you like this. Like and subscribe for more, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care now.